a point. Seems like they've got all the bases covered, doesn't it? That's, that's fun to think about. Freight continues, there's also a doctrine of Nadi Bindu Prana, which is used in a description of the subtle bioenergetic body. Bindu, in this case, is the point or the drop. Nadi is a conduit of bioenergy, and prana is the life force itself. By controlling these three, one can control consciousness. Sanskrit also has the word akshara, which describes the collapse of fullness to a point and from a point. The center is also a funda fundamental idea in alchemy. So here, we, see, we, we already have a cross-discipline approach here. I, I love how this works. I really love how this works. According to Michael Meyer, the center contains the indivisible point, which is simple, indestructible, and eternal. Its physical counterpart is gold, and therefore it is a symbol of eternity. He's quoting Carl Jung in his Alchemical Studies, which I have. It's a good, that's a good book. Carl Jung also quotes another alchemist, Gerard Dorn, who writes, For is he one, and yet not the one. It is simple and consists of the number four. It will show the adept the fulfillment of the mysteries. This is the center of the natural wisdom, he says. He says the circumference closes in on itself. It forms a circle, an immeasurable order reaching to infinity. Here is the number four within whose bounds the number three, together with the number two, combine into one, fulfills all things. In these relations between four, three, two, and one is found the culmination of all knowledge and of the mystic art. The culmination of all knowledge with the combination of numbers four, three, two, and one. Very interesting from a Masonic point of view, for those of you who know what I'm talking about. The infallible midpoint of the center, infallible medi centrum is called. Jung adds that the one is the midpoint of the circle, the center of the triad. It is fire. The point is most akin to the nature of light. The light is a Simulacrum day. I found further reference that applies to this symbol in the well-known Kabbalistic treaty, the Tree of Life, the Et Chaim of Rabbi Isaac Luria. He says, at the start of its first branch in this book, it's describing the genesis of the universe. Here's what we read about this, very interestingly. I hope the wind's not too bad. I'm sorry if it is. It's just that I've got such a beautiful scenery behind me <laughs> that I want to go this direction. We'll see. It's talking about God. He then contracted. And this is the very famous Kabbalistic concept of the Zimzum, the contraction of God. He contracted himself into the middle point in the very center. Because the Kabbalistic concept is God is everywhere. And in order to give us a creation, there had to be space. And the only way that space could be found is if God contracted himself to a point and made space. This is the Kabbalistic idea of the Zimzum. He contracted the light and he removed himself to the perimeter the edge round about the midpoint so that at the very midpoint there remained an empty space the air 
and avoid. Fascinating, isn't it? He, in the above text, is obviously the divine creator, as described later in the same text by Vital, who says, There is no intellect created which could conceive of him, since he has no place, and no boundary, and no name. So here we have a description of the process of creation from the Kabbalah. First, Zim Zum, the shrinking, the contraction of God into a point. And then expansion to the boundless infinity representing the circle. I love that. That's a great insight. With this point within a circle in Freemasonry. Accordingly, the point within a circle in the tracing board of Freemasonry represents the act of creation. The paradigmatic construction, which is the fundamental craft of the Mason. Profound insight into one of our Freemasonic symbols for you to ponder about and enjoy. I love that. Now in this same journal of the Masonic Society, this same issue, Stephen M. Osborne, The Way Less Traveled, it's on pages 12, 13, and 14. I'm going to hop, skip, and jump through this article because I want to concentrate on his ideas of the point within a circle that I believe are extremely fascinating. The, the application of symbolisms within our lives. The, never get to the point where if you've studied a symbol from one or two or three or five or ten or twenty Freemasons that you have finally arrived at the fullest understanding, aha, I now know what that means and now I can go my way. No, there is always something more. It's just like life. There's always something more. Yes, you've lived a full good day today. That's not all there is to it. You have another day tomorrow. Keep that in mind. Constant study and expanding our circles in knowledge because it is my philosophy in life that the more educated we are, the better Freemasons we can be, the better contribution we can make to better society. I firmly believe that. So it's an ever-increasing of our education. The ancient mysteries, this is on page 12, the ancient mysteries were made available only to those who had spent years purifying themselves. Preparing themselves to receive them, the privilege was granted when the adepts felt that the candidate was duly and truly prepared. The mysteries were taught in a series of lessons they often culminated in a near-death experience in which the candidate approached the Godhead. Wow! And if he returned, he was instructed as a new adept to meditate on the experience for the rest of his life and direct his future actions accordingly. The experience was intensely personal, as you can well imagine, of course, and never the same for anyone. A lot of bees around here. I hope I don't get stung. The experience was intensely personal. It was understood by other adepts. The object of the mysteries was for one to truly know himself. Through reflecting upon the dramas that he had observed, keep deep introspection, the study of nature. That's why I love coming out into my backyard. The geometry of nature is fantastically beautiful. From the flowers, the plants, to the birds, to the animals, to the earth itself, to the clouds in the sky. 